Duolingo is the most popular language learning app in the whole world. But if you're wanting to learn a language and you believe that Duolingo is going to get you there, think again. In this video, I'm going to reveal the problems with using Duolingo as a language learning resource, share why, and also reveal what you can do to maximize your language learning instead, whilst having just as much, if not more fun than with Duolingo. Now, I'm not just going to completely hate on the app. I did use it to get a 250 day streak. I practiced some aspects of my French and I also did use it to start learning German. I also upgraded to the family and friends plan for a year and I found that it can be useful but only for very very specific use cases which I'm going to share later in this video. However overall the negative aspects seriously outweigh the positive. Duolingo is a super fun and easy to use app but that's all part of the problem. Their whole strategy seems to be similar to that of an addictive social media platform where their aim is to get you to keep on coming back to the app, spend more time on it so that you are more likely to ultimately upgrade and spend money. And how do they do this? Well, very soon after I started using Duolingo, seeing my streak increment every day gave me more satisfaction than actually improving in the language did. I find that often when I'm practicing in my target language, I'm usually in a relatively consistent state mood wise. When you see that Duolingo's characters are cheering you on for getting a single question right and then you complete, oh my goodness, a whole entire lesson, you feel like you are making immense progress and even get a bit of a dopamine hit. However, rather than using the app to actually learn languages, most of the time I was just opening it up as part of a daily requirement. Even if it took less than two minutes, I had the feeling like I had done language learning for the day. So sometimes I wouldn't do much else. People are just becoming more and more fixated on keeping their streak alive rather than actually improving in a language. My partner actually built up a Duolingo streak to over 2,300 days with Japanese. That's literally just over six years. He said that he started out just wanting to learn the basics for traveling to Japan, but says that it quickly became became obsessive just to keep the streak alive. It even plagued his mind when crossing international datelines so he wouldn't lose his streak. But when you hear that someone has a 2,300 day streak, you would assume that they have a good level within the language and maybe they could even be fluent. But my partner in Japanese can only say my name is, say how to order food and maybe point out a couple of basic vocabulary words here and there. And other people I've spoken to seem to share their streaks with great pride, like the streak itself is measurable progress of their language learning. Knowing that a streak can be built up just by spending a couple minutes tapping on a few things on your phone, I'm never impressed by how big someone's streak is and I don't think that it alone reflects their commitment to learning a language either. To me what you're really saying is that you have an addiction to an app. The second feature Duolingo have to keep users addicted is by gaining XP and competing in leagues and this is something my partner did as well. He was in the Diamond League consistently for a number of weeks, about two hours before one of the leagues was about to conclude. I was over at my family's house and rather than spending some quality time with them, I was on my phone trying to rack up more and more XP so that there was no doubt that I would be progressing into the next league and could even win. My focus was on gaining the XP and not improving in the language which just wasn't doing me any favors. Now I'm not going to ruin anyone's fun if they genuinely enjoy doing this, but don't be thinking at the same time that this is actually helping you to learn a language because we all know where the real focus is if that is the priority here. But what if you were to turn off the league competitions, not focus at all on maintaining your streak and simply follow the Duolingo curriculum as they have it mapped out for you. I've seen posts from users asking if they can get fluent with Duolingo alone. Because the app is fun, it almost feels like a shortcut or like a hack for learning a language because it's not exactly hard work to just make your way through a free app. I'll ask you, if you were just dumped in a country after using nothing but Duolingo, do you think you could survive? Ah, tu es là. Merci. De rien. Tu as dit que tu avais un problème avec ton ordinateur? Oui. Quel est le problème? Un Parisien euh, dans le sang. J'ai toujours grandi à Paris, euh, j'ai pas vraiment de famille ailleurs. In my opinion, 
Definitely not. <laughs> From my experience learning French, it took so much more effort than Duolingo exercises to adjust my ear to finally listen and actually understand. But that came with so many hours being contributed to watching videos, TV shows, movies, and listening to podcasts, and even speaking with natives to improve my listening that much. So then, if you have to use additional resources anyway, why use Duolingo at all? when you could use your valuable time elsewhere. So what should you dedicate your time on instead of Duolingo? There is simply no substitute for getting exposure to the language than with comprehensible input. But don't just pick any random content. To make language learning fun for you, choose content that you actually want to understand or content that is within an interest of yours. If there's an article that you thought, oh, I really want to know about that, try and read it in French because you have an incentive to actually try to understand what it is. Do you have a favorite film? Try and see if you can find the same film, but with dubbing. Find podcasts in topics that you're interested in. Read books, children's or advanced books that you read in your native language and get a translation. Subscribe to YouTube channels that you enjoy. I also share a ton of my favorite resources in this video here, which you can go and watch next if you're interested. If you are still a fan of course-led programs, I can also recommend Lingo an online language platform because you get listening and reading immersion in your target language but you also get that speaking practice and in just one hour of Lingoda you're going to get so much more value out of that than spending one hour on Duolingo. I think it's probably best altogether if you just delete the app to save you from getting distracted but I will still share the specific use cases where I have personally benefited from Duolingo. Number one, if you are an absolute beginner and you want to dabble in a new language just to dip your toe in, great. But very soon, however, your time would be better off spent elsewhere. Second, Duolingo gives you lots of opportunities to see new words for the first time. Therefore, it is actually a word priming tool. You need to see a word seven meaningful times before it gets submitted to memory. Duolingo could, for example, be the first time and then if you were to go and use immersion to watch real content content in real context and see those words reappear, you already have some level of familiarity with the word, but then seeing it in the context is really going to help solidify that word into your brain. This is only really that good for the early stages because you just can't progress through Duolingo's curriculum fast enough to learn enough new words to keep up with the rate that you would be learning a language if you were just immersing yourself in the content. That's when I just stopped using Duolingo. Number three, I found that through trying to have conversations with natives, I was severely lacking in the imperfect tense. I went and found specifically in Duolingo where the imperfect tense chapters were. So I had to do a few challenges and like jump ahead in the course. But then when I did those activities, because Duolingo is just so much repetition, I did find that it really hammered in those imperfect conjugations into my head really well. So it was just basically like doing grammar exercises, but I then of course had to supplement my Duolingo exercises with more speaking practice. This again is probably going to break down though because you can't just search for exercises or a particular topic to go and practice those points and if you do want to jump ahead in the course you risk skipping other material that you may not know so the app just doesn't really encourage you to do this. In reality language learning is not always linear but with Duolingo it has to be. Number four I really like Duolingo's story feature just to get more exposure to the language in context. And number five, using Duolingo to replace another addiction. So if you're wanting to stop scrolling on social media, for example, it can often be easier to switch the habit instead. I would agree that this makes sense unless your social media account itself consists of accounts posting content within your target language, which would actually give you better exposure than Duolingo does. Obviously, Duolingo is massive fun. However, just don't kid yourself and think that using Duolingo is actually going to be the thing that is getting you to learn a language. It's probably not doing much. To hear more about my experience learning French last year and even where Duolingo fit into the picture, check out this video here next. Keen to hear your thoughts on Duolingo. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next one.